Lady Jane Grey left a tragic legacy as the Queen of England who reigned for only nine days before getting executed at the young age of 16. Since she was merely a child throughout most of the events that led to her rapid rise and fall, her grim fate was the result of scheming and manipulations by cruel adults who used her as a pawn. Jane was descended from the royal bloodline through her mother, Frances Brandon, who was born to the sister of King Henry VIII. Her parents had high hopes for her and expected to climb the socio-political ladder through her future marriage to a powerful man. However, as a young child, Jane was naturally gentle and quiet, which was perceived by her parents as a sign of weakness that needed to be stamped out through strict discipline. Her parents subjected her to regular beatings and emotional abuse, and she coped by drowning herself in books and learning. She confessed later in life that her childhood was hellish, as every little move she made was criticized and she felt constantly threatened by her parents. When she was less than 10 years old, she was sent to live under the guardianship of King Henry's sixth wife, Catherine Parr, to learn how to be a proper lady. Catherine showered her with kindness and affection that Jane had never felt from her own parents and remained a loving maternal figure to Jane throughout her life. After Henry passed away, his 10-year-old son, Edward VI, ascended to the throne, which commenced an era of political chaos as ambitious nobles vied for control over the young king. Jane, who was only 10 or 11 years old at the beginning of Edward's reign, became a useful tool for power struggles due to the combination of her young age and close blood ties to the throne. Catherine Parr's new husband, Thomas Seymour, was an ambitious man who was outraged by his brother's appointment to the prestigious status of Lord Protector and de facto ruler of England until the king came of age. As a guardian of Jane due to his marriage to Catherine, Thomas tried to assert his own control over the king by proposing a marriage between Jane and the king. The proposal didn't work because the king had alternative arrangements for his marriage, and Jane's parents tormented Jane for failing to marry the king. Thomas's plotting eventually led to his execution for treason, and his brother was later overthrown and succeeded by the first Duke of Northumberland, John Dudley. To tie Jane to the newly powerful Dudley family, Jane's parents forced her to marry the Duke's son, Guilford Dudley. Jane refused the proposal because she strongly disliked both the Duke and his son, and her parents verbally and physically assaulted her and beat her until she agreed. Less than a month after Jane's wedding, King Edward passed away at the age of 15 due to illness in 1553. John Dudley wanted to seize this opportunity and further consolidate his position by pushing his daughter-in-law Jane onto the throne. Before he passed away, Henry VIII had restored his daughters Mary and Elizabeth to the line of succession through the Third Succession Act, so Mary was supposed to take the throne once Edward died without offspring. However, Mary's devotion to Catholicism in an increasingly Protestant England alarmed many nobles who had become wealthy through the Protestant Reformation. As these nobles had seized many riches from Catholic institutions, the possibility of Mary bringing Catholicism back to England was of grave concern. Moreover, Mary, who was already a mature political player in her 30s, would not allow Dudley to continue his control over the realm, to remain in power, it was strategic for Dudley to support the claim of the young and gentle Jane, who would be easy for him to control. When King Edward was about to die, Dudley was able to persuade him to bar Mary and Elizabeth from succession and name Jane as an heir presumptive. However, the validity of this change was questionable since Edward had not yet reached the legal testatory age of 21, so his will likely had no power to overturn the Third Succession Act passed by the Parliament during his father's reign. When Jane was told by Dudley and her parents that she should claim the throne for herself, she was so shocked and frightened that she fainted. She initially refused to cooperate and declared that Mary was the rightful heir to the throne, but Dudley and her parents berated her until she gave in to their plot. Four days after King Edward's death, Jane was proclaimed queen on July 6, 1553. Dudley now faced the monumental task of gathering a force to suppress dissent and defeat Mary in battle which he failed disastrously. His soldiers soon deserted him as it became apparent that Mary was able to raise a strong army and gain widespread support. The royal council turned its back on Jane and declared Mary the rightful queen merely two days into Jane's reign. More shockingly, even Jane's own father betrayed her and switched his loyalty to Mary. As Mary was crowned queen, 
Jane was detained in her former royal residence and tried to explain to Mary that she was forced to take the throne and never had any desire to be queen. However, as England's very first female monarch, Mary already faced enough challenges and could not afford to tolerate any possibility of future rebellions in Jane's name. Mary treated Jane with benevolence and generosity throughout her period of confinement, but she eventually decided that Jane had to die, especially after Jane firmly refused to convert to Catholicism. Jane was charged with treason, which carried the sentence of burning at the stake in public, but Mary reduced her sentence to a quick beheading in a private room in her last act of mercy. Jane was very calm in accepting her fate and remained dignified and devoted to her faith in her last moments.